Well, welcome back to Barley and Hops. Yes, I'm George, your humble host, and we are the channel that dares to unlock those mysteries of home distilling. We've got one for you today. This is that three-inch bubble plate that uh, I highlighted uh, some time ago, um, and we're going to run it today, and I'm going to show you exactly how this thing works. Now that most of you are back with us, um, you know that, of course, subscribing is always helpful. Always helpful. If you, if you believe, as most of us believe, that home distilling should be legal, I, your subscription gives this hobby a name. Yes, the, we're, we're seen throughout the world, and the more subscriptions we have, of course, the more popular it becomes, etc., etc. So, please... Like the video, share us with your friends, subscribe. Uh, we have millions of viewers who are not subscribed, um, and I'm okay with that. But I have to ask you up front, please, just hit the subscribe button. It costs you absolutely nothing, and yes, I benefit from that. Thank you. Now, on to this. This thing is amazing. Um, I think I paid like 70 bucks for it. It's a Chinese model. Yep, absolutely. You can go on. Uh, I got it from AliExpress. Uh, please don't ask me for the link. I, I don't know where it's at. But you can go on AliExpress, and these things are available. Uh, they come in many different sizes. You can get a 2-inch, a 3-inch, a 4-inch, whatever it is you're looking for. I picked a 3-inch because I have a 3-inch column on my 8-gallon still. And I've got a 3,500 watt element in there on 240 volts that I'm going to run through my PID controller, as I always do. Um, and I've also decided I'm going to make myself one of them high-speed PIDs. I get jealous every time I ship one out. Uh, now, um, what you'll also need with this is a deflagmator, a 3-inch deflagmator. Uh, and that's, that's what it looks like. It's just a, looks like a great big Gatlin gun. Um, and, you know, I've got cold water in, cold water out. And this is my valve I put on here. What's that for? Exactly, it's for controlling the flow of water through the, the flagmator. Okay, you need to be able to control that water flow because the flow through your deflagmator is going to control the amount of condensing that happens above your bubble plates. So this goes right up here. Now you'll also notice, I've got to bring this up, you'll notice the offset between here and here. Um, that should be your first giveaway on which direction, how do I orient this thing? Does it go that way? Or does this thing turn over and does it go this way? Well, you'll notice that you've got the bubble plate here, and if you put your deflagmator right there, you have no offset between the deflagmator and the bubble plate. So that should be your first dead giveaway. Uh, the other one is, is rather simply, Understand, and I've got this already, I've, I've taken off the three bolts on the top that hold this thing together. And it disassembles real easy for cleaning. And if we take this out, and I'll, I'll just remove this bubble plate. That's a good seal. Okay, this bubble plate is a stainless steel plate. Some come in copper. Uh, this one's made out of stainless steel, but it has a copper standoffs. Now, this one's called a downcomer, okay? Uh, that's the, the, the common terminology used for this one. And it's the only, only one that goes down, uh, and the other three go up. I guess you can call them up-goers if you want to. I really don't have a preference. I just know that this one is known as the downcomer. Now, the way these things operate is that your distillate from the top uh, starts to move up and it condenses in your deflagmator and it starts to drop back down and then it does what we call load a plate so it loads this plate with a lot of liquid and that liquid starts to rise in here and it goes over top of this portion of the hub known as the downcomer and then it drains down it starts to boil again or vaporize in this small cup but in the very same time in the center it just drips out and it goes down and it loads your second plate and your second plate does the same thing to your third plate and your third plate of course all the way down regardless of how many plates you have it loads them that way now there is another design for this 
um, and that design is a little bit more commercial, um, and that would be, this would be sitting here, and you'd have ports on the side with valves that you use to constantly load your bubble plates. Um, that, that's for a really large operation, but for a home distiller, you let the plates, they will load themselves, believe me. Uh, and you'll see that real shortly as we run this, because we're going to actually put this together. We're going to attach it to the still. We're going to heat it up and, and run it completely. Now, one other thing, I want to take one of these apart. And all I'm going to do is just use this Allen wrench and take this screw off the top of one of the upgoers. <laughs> and you'll see how this is designed. So you'll see that. And you see that there's an opening there, and then this sets right on top. So what does that do? That what that allows is it allows that a certain amount of liquid to rise up inside here and it overflow and also flow down. But what it also does is it per, it permits the liquid that doesn't rise all the way above to bubble around it and then push back out. So they're pretty ingenious designs, and um, they're relatively easy to maintain. They just go together with this one simple screw that goes in the center, and while you're doing that, it's also easy just to simple disassemble, put into some of our 551 mixture. Here's a video for that. Um, you can clean this. Uh, the copper will clean right up and be brand new, uh, and then you can use that 551 cleaner over and over again. So... One other thing you'll notice is the orientation of these plates plays a role in how effective it runs. Um, and in this particular case, we've already discussed it, the three go up and one goes down. Um, this one is the downcomer is on this side. The next downcomer goes on the opposite side to load the next plate. And this downcomer on this plate is on this side to load this plate. And then this downcomer is on this side that drops back inside your still. And the purpose of that is, is that if you had them the opposite way, your downcomers would just down, it would just drip into that one, that one, you know. So they're on opposite sides. So make sure you orient those correctly. And this thing runs amazing. So here's a good question. If someone's going to ask this, well, George, what would happen if you put it in upside down? Well, there's no right way to do the wrong thing. Um, if it's upside down, it is upside down and it does not work properly. What happens is, is that you've got this sitting up here and you've got your deflagmator right there and then all of a sudden your deflagmator starts to fill up with water or with your mash. And what happens when the deflagmator fills up with mash? It starts to puke. So, yes, it makes a difference. There's a right way to put it on here. And by golly, there's a wrong way. Now, one last thing before we get this thing running, because I'm going to have this all hooked up. I'm going to have it preheated, uh, and then we're going to show you how it runs. That takes us a couple of minutes. Uh, I would be remiss if I did not show you something. I want to. Uh, this is offer a tip. Um, and this is, happens, and a lot of people will use these. These are the what? They're Scotch Bright copper, copper scrubbers. I know. There you go. I, somebody's going to turn it off right now and go out and get some. Don't buy these. They're really, really inexpensive. If you read it, it says copper coated scrubbing pads. Um, and it should make you wonder, you know what copper does. Copper tarnishes. And this looks like some really nice shiny copper. Uh, and if it's still shiny inside this bag that's not really airtight and it hasn't corroded, is it really copper? And if it's just copper coated, uh, what do you think happens during the distillation process? Yes, that starts to break down and flake off, so please don't call me and say, George, I got these little flakes inside my still, uh, inside my mat, uh, in, my, in my spirit. It, it's, it's bouncing around inside my jar. Where did that come from? Okay. Thought I'd just offer that. Let your conscience be your guide. Yes. Right, well, I've got my chiller working in the background, so you'll hear that. I uh, hope that doesn't interrupt you. But now you'll see that when I've got this oriented right, you, you notice how this plate fills and it fills that plate, it fills that plate, it fills that plate. Now, what, look at all this bubbling action that's taking place. 
Now I'm going to turn my deflagmator down just a little bit because I've got what I have is full condensing going on right here. And I just want that to dance and then start to produce. Now you, now it's pretty it's pretty obvious to watch this now and you can see how each plate is loading um, and I've got a separate distillation that happens at each level if you'll notice this. Uh, take this one for example. Uh, everything that's right that has risen and risen through this plate and hit the deflagmators dropping back down and it's re vaporizing here and that's all those bubbles it's re vaporizing and all that's just water and it's dropping back down to the next plate and it's doing the same thing as it works its way down and anything left over that I don't want is dropping back down in the column um, and if you look close you can see it actually dripping right out of the deflagmator and it's keeping those plates loaded so we're just gonna allow that to run I've got this thing set at 175 degrees uh, right now it's 155.1 I'm just gonna let it run I can probably might want to just turn down my deflagmator just a little bit there we go turn that down just a little bit and sit back and let it let it run 